everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be doing a review and demonstration of the XP Pen Artist 15.6 IPS graphics drawing tablet. This is a drawing monitor and so you can plug it into your PC or laptop and have a screen that you can draw on and a pressure sensitive pen. This is perfect for digital art and this model is more affordable than others on the market. While this is not a sponsored video, the company was kind enough to send me this tablet so I could test it out and I want to say a big thank you to XP Pen for allowing me to make this video. As always with my review videos, the opinions and thoughts that I give in this video are my own and 100% honest. Okay, so I'm going to start by unboxing the tablet, having a look at what comes in the box, then we'll walk through setup and then I'll create an illustration in Photoshop and talk about my experiences using the screen. To start with, the tablet comes very well packaged, everything is well wrapped up and protected, the screen has several layers of plastic packaging and a screen protector on it. For the filming of this video I kept the, the screen protector on because it lessened the glare from the lights, but normally when I'm working I tend to take it off. The tablet is 15.6 inches and has an HD resolution of 1920 by 1080 It has six express keys down one side and the design is quite thin and light, so if you wanted to move it around it would be quite easy to do so. After the tablet all the accessories are stored neatly in this little box and everything you need to work on a tablet comes in the box except of course for your drawing program and PC. First we have the driver CD and then there are a few cards including a warranty and a quick start guide in several different languages. Then there's the drawing glove. This fits on both the right and the left hand. If it's worn on the left then the logo is on the underside of the glove rather than on the top but the glove does work on both hands and the tablet is designed for both left and right handed users so that's good and the drawing glove is really useful I never draw on the screen without the glove and it helps your hand glide easily across the screen and just generally helps to protect the screen as well also included was a cleaning cloth for cleaning the screen. Then we have the pen and the pen stand. The pen is really nice and lightweight. It feels really comfortable in the hand and it's actually a very similar size to a regular pen. Here's a quick size comparison with a white gel pen that I have. The pen also requires no charging and no batteries. Unlike other stylus pens that you need to plug in to charge, this doesn't require any charging and it has 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity and two express keys down one side which you can customise. The pen can rest on the stand upright or on its side and the spare nibs are inside the pen stand so it's all very compact. There are a couple of different plugs and power adapters and you should be able to find one that fits where you live. And then we have a group of cables. The cables are as compact as possible. These sorts of tablet screens do require a fair amount of different cables. One to plug the screen into the power source, two to link the screen to your PC via an HDMI and a USB slot. But the company has grouped the cables together as much as possible so it's not too much and you just want to follow the instructions and link all the cables together. So now I'm setting the tablet up on my desk so I can start working, just plugging everything in and then turning on the screen. I first put in the driver disk and downloaded the software and then I was prompted to download the updated version of the driver from XP Pen's website which is recommended you do as it can often fix any bugs or performance issues. So I did that and it took seconds to set up and I left all the settings on default for now but you can go in and easily play around and adjust all the settings, the express key shortcuts on the tablet and the pen, you can explore the sensitivity levels and set everything the way you like it. There are also settings on the tablet itself, brightness, contrast and colour and so on, so you can match you, your tablet screen to the PC screen in order to get the correct colours and settings. The first thing I like to test is how well the pen works and the pressure sensitivity. So I made a couple of test pages and I'm using Photoshop for all the artwork today. I like to start and make these wavy lines, pressing hard and then lighter with the pen and just go through varying my pressure and lines. I'm using a default Photoshop brush here. Everything today for this video is default, so default settings, default brushes, I'm not using anything fancy. As you can see the pressure sensitivity was really great, I could get a lot of line variation and this is a good practice exercise and a good way to get to know your new tablet and just to play with how much pressure you need to apply to get the line that you want. 
Then after a few pages of test lines, I started on my demonstration piece. I began with a sketch layer, then I drew the line art and then worked on the colouring. Whilst I'm doing that, I'll talk about the performance of the tablet whilst I was drawing. I worked on this piece over a couple of days in two to three hour segments. I really enjoyed working with the tablet, I thought the performance was really good. I only had one issue which I fixed quite easily and I'll talk about that in a moment. I found the 15.6 inch screen size to be perfect for me. XP Pen makes a variety of different screen sizes and price points. This one sits in the middle, so if you have a larger budget or you want a bigger screen then there are more expensive models. And if you have a smaller budget or want a smaller size screen then they do have cheaper ones available. This model I have here is a really nice size for me, it's not too small that I feel cramped when I'm working and it also fits really nicely on my desk. If you're thinking of getting one of these screens then you do need to consider desk space as you need to set your screen up near your PC or your laptop and to be able to have everything plugged in whilst you're working. So your desk space and getting a tablet that will fit it is something to keep in mind. Also this particular model doesn't come with a stand. Many of these types of drawing screens come with stands that uh, attached to the back of the tablet and you can adjust the tablet to different heights and angles to draw on. This screen lays completely flat on the desk like a, regu like a regular iPad type of tablet does. If you want a raised angle surface to work on then the company does sell a stand to go along with a tablet. It's an extra but they do have one if that's necessary for you. I didn't find it a problem to work flat when I'm drawing normally I work flat so it didn't feel too different and I think that's a good thing. I felt like I was just drawing at my desk like I normally do and I didn't get a disconnect which can sometimes happen if you're like me and you work traditionally most of the time and then you switch to drawing digitally sometimes you can get a bit of a disconnect and I didn't find I had much of one when I was working on this tablet because it was laying flat and it felt like I was just sitting and drawing at my desk like I normally do. I was also able to move the tablet around and I actually had it on my lap for a while whilst I was drawing. Uh, just because the tablet was light and thin enough and lays flat it was easy to just pop it on my lap for a bit. It's also quite easy to have a little mobility. Now that said, I still needed it plugged into the laptop and into the power source. So it's by no means as portable as a regular iPad or that kind of tablet. This is a drawing monitor, it's a second screen for your PC or your laptop, but it is quite light and it could be portable. I think if you like to work in different areas of your house for example and you worked off a laptop you could easily set up your screens in different places without too much trouble. I also really like the pen design. It's smaller than the other digital pens I've tried before. It's this similar size to a regular pen like I showed earlier. This is great for me because I have quite small hands and my hand, my hand can get strained and tired from holding the larger sized pens and I found that this pen was much better and less tiring, tiring for me to use for long periods of time. Now that's a very personal and particular thing for me but if you have small hands then this might be useful to know. I also really liked the no charging required function of this pen and that's a big plus in my book because I never remember to charge my digital pens, I always forget to plug them in and then I have to stop what I'm doing in order to charge them and not having this an issue was really good with this pen. As for lag and delay when drawing, I didn't see anything that was noticeable to me. The pen moved swift swiftly across the screen and then the cursor or the brush on the PC followed quickly as well. There will always be a little lag between the two screens but I didn't find it noticeable as I said and it didn't affect my drawing in any way. Also if your PC is slow like mine then you can get more delay issues occasionally because of that and that's not the tablet's problem. That can be because your laptop or PC is running a larger program like Photoshop and it, it's slow or old. I found in the past that when working in Photoshop it's best to have no other program running at the same time. That can really help. Now if you have a, a faster PC then this is probably not an issue for you but it may be helpful to those of you who are like me and working with an older computer. As for any problems I had with a tablet when I was working, I did have one. When I set up the tablet 
the pen didn't work correctly. It had a really long lag and it was glitching all, all over the place when I tried to move it across the screen. This was fixed instantly when I downloaded the latest version of the driver software. This is an important thing to do when you set the tablet up because if there are any bug fixes or improvements the company has made then they will be in the updated driver. So if you're having any issues then getting the latest driver may solve them. It did for me. Also, if you get into a muddle at any point with the settings or when you're do playing around with the express keys and sometimes if you double click a button too many times and some strange things happen, resetting the settings to default tends to fix anything that's acting odd. At least in my experience, that's what's helped me. Overall, I really like the tablet. It's a nice size, it's light, the screen resolution is really good, the pen is great to use, the pressure sensitivity is lovely. I liked I didn't have to charge it, and of course the smaller size was helpful for me. The express keys are really useful if you use a lot of shortcuts when working, and apart from a simple driver update, I didn't have any problems working with the tablet. I know these screens are not cheap, this one is more affordable than others but they still are an investment. I found for me that using one has helped speed up my workflow when drawing digitally and I used a small Wacom tablet, not a screen one but the, the smallest little tablet for a while before stepping up to one of these tablet screens. I think if you're looking for something as an entry level to drawing screens then this one may be a good choice for you and the company does have others if you have different if you have a different budget so you can check that out if you'd like to see the different options available. Anyway that's my final little artwork and my thoughts on this tablet. I hope you enjoyed the review and found it helpful. Thanks again to XP Pen for letting me try the tablet out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and I will see you next time.